Hello guys, welcome to Linux Lab. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to set up open a lab server in Ubuntu 18.04 LTS machine. So before beginning, let me tell you a little bit about what is LDAP. So LDAP is lightweight directory access protocol. It is a protocol for querying and modifying directory service. It is an open source, vendor neutral and industry standard protocol which runs over TCP IP. So the open LDAP is the implementation of LDAP in Ubuntu. Uh, the directory service means uh, it is a specialized database designed for searching and browsing, for example, a phone directory or uh, the database of employees in an organization or some sort of hierarchy based data. So in this tutorial, I'm going to follow the open LDAP documentation by Ubuntu. So you can see that this documentation has a fair bit of explanation on the installation and then how do you modify your database and so on. So I'll put the link in the description and I'll be following this uh, guide throughout my tutorial. And also you can see the openlab.org page and I'm in the admin manual. So the use of the directory service, it can be multipurpose. So you can see that uh, it, it can it is used for machine authentication, user authentication, user system groups, address book, organization representation, and so on. So you can see the documentation contains nice explanation on the aspects of LDAP and other various things. So without any delay, let's start the setup. So let me fire the terminal. So here I have the terminal. And so let me first install the required components. For LDAP. So sudo apt install slapd and then util. So the first one, slapd, is the daemon which runs the LDAP server in the Ubuntu machine. So here I have the man page for slapd, slapd, and it is the standard on LDAP daemon which listens for the LDAP connections on any number of ports default 389. So this is the thing which runs in your machine and it listens to LDAP connections, it listens to, it handles the uh, configuration part, it, it handles the server section. So, and the LDAP utils, it, these are the modules or the other utility commands. So you, you will be using uh, LDAP A and LDAP search and LDAP modify and things like that. So it includes this type of commands. So, Let's install those things. And so first it asks for your password for the admin entry. So you can put any password you like. So let me put a password. Okay. And waiting, waiting. Yeah, so those things are installed. So let's configure. As a repeating, so sudo dpkc configure. So, if you enable this option, no initial configuration or database will be created for you. So, just say no. And then get the domain name. So, practice.net. This is just for, just for test purpose. So, I write practice.net. You can give any num name. That you require, and then the organization name that you practice here, and the administrative password that you said just just a moment ago, and then it asks for the database backend to use. So it says that MDB backend is recommended. So I, I choose MDB backend, and do you want the database to be removed when slapping spurs? No. There are still files which will probably be Move the old database, yes. Yes. So up to this point, what we have done is we installed SLAPD and LDAP utils and then configured SLAPD. So, so let's see if we have successfully installed SLAPD or not. So sudo tree uh, ATC. So we can see that inside etc ldap slapd.d folder we can see the configuration files and then the schema 
of our LDAP. So if you have successfully installed SlapD or successfully set up OpenLDAP, then you should be seeing this type of files inside the SlapD.d folder. So let's add some entries in our LDAP. So what we will be using is LDIF. So uh, LDIF means LDAP data intelligence file. So through this uh, LDIF file format, we will be adding our entries. So let's sudo. Uh, I'll be using vmeditor and uh, entries dot LDIF. So in this add entries, I'll be adding the entries or uh, data in my LDAP. So let's say I to insert and then so the first thing So this is the first entry I made. So you can see that the entry is at the first, at the beginning of the entry, I'm writing the DN, that is the distinguished name, and then the object class the, that this entry will be using. And the OU is the organizational, short form of organizational unit. And so uh, every entry consists of the object class. So uh, the attributes which it will be using. So you can see that the attribute in this entry is OU and this OU, attribute is defined inside this object class organizational unit and then only this you can use this attribute in your entry so let me write another entry so d and o u equals groups dc dc and then object unit The philosophy behind this is that we have a big organization and then this entry I will be using uh, as the uh, as the uh, upper level for each employee and this one I will be using for upper level for each groups inside that organization. Say one person is working in the developer section then the developer will be inside the groups and the person's entry will be inside the employee. So um, let's see, uh, let's, uh, let me add an entry. Uh, for the group developers, and it's a developers OU equals groups, so DC equals practice. DC equals, yeah. Oops, object class is POSIX group, not organization unit. Group. And see developers, GID number is the 5000. So this GID number is the group ID number of the group developers, right? And then the CN stands for common name. And let me add a person's entry. So UID Make sure that uh, all the cases are correct and make sure you have to make sure that uh, you, this LDIF format is case sensitive. So ready. So as in stands for surname. Even name, Freddy, common name, Freddy Smith. So what am I simply doing is I'm adding the attributes for this entry. So Freddy Smith, and then your user ID number is ten thousand. Let's give and group ID number. So this group ID number it links the user Freddy 
to the group, uh, let's say he is in the developers group, so I will add the group ID number 5000. So group ID number 5000 will link this user to this group. So let's say, that's good. So if uh, the password for the user is Freddy123, that's <laughs> a simple password. So login shell be in best. That's the login shell for the user Freddy and home directory for. Home Freddy. Okay. So if everything I've written is correct, then I have added an entry. So let me summarize what I have done here is um, I have created an employee um, class, employee organizational unit, and then in groups organizational unit, and inside the in groups organizational unit i have added the developer so let's say we have an organization and then it has a lot of groups say let's say developer section or support section or quality analysis section so one of the section is developers and then the user freddy uh, lies inside the developers then uh, and we have all the attributes of the user uid freddy so you can see that each entry has one object class and other attributes. So this first entry has attributes OU employee. So this at, this uh, attribute must be defined inside the inside the object class organizational unit. And another another one is groups OU. And then we use the POSIX group object class. And this POSIX group object class has C N and G I D number. And this C N and G I D number are the attributes of this entry. So I I'm guessing that you are getting quite a bit of sense on this you can learn more about LEIF file format so how you are going uh, you add entries LEIF file format on this link I put this link in the description and then uh, on the man open a lab website as well and then it in this guide as well so 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 let's save this file, press ESC, let's save this file by colon WQ and this file is saved. So let's add the entry using LDAP add. So this LDAP add command is from the LDAP utils that we installed previously. So LDAP add X. Admin DC practice DC net W and entries that LDIF. So, what this LDAP add command does is it is uh, using this C and admin DC practice net is the administrative user which the password of which we just said at the first at the beginning and this w will ask means that it will ask for the password when i press the enter and dash f means that we'll be using this ldif file to add the entry so let me press the enter it is asking me for the password so i'm entering the password and then yes boom so we have added the new entry or you employ this practice.net this practice net adding another entry groups and developers and freddy so what we just did is we added uh, these uh, four, five, four entries to LDAP directory. So mm, let's verify that by using LDAP search command. So what this LDAP search command does is it searches through our directory. So let's search DC equals practice DC equals net. And let me search for the user with UID ready. And then what are the things do I want to see of that user? I want to see his common name. Let me see his surname. Or let me see the group ID number he is linked to. Let me see his UID number. And let me see his given name. So let's see. So it has found the user. This DN is the distinguished name. This DN is unique for every entry. So make sure you uh, have this DN unique for each entry. And then these are the attributes what we ask for during the LDAP search. So we can search through, we can search, use LDAP search to list all our entries. So DC equals to practice 
this equals to n and we just press enter so uh, we do not specify what we what we want so, okay let me correct it and upstairs x element okay so these are all our entries so we can see this is the admin okay this is the practice net this is the first entry is the organization this we this this part is the one what we set up in while we install slabd and then these are our four entries or you employ or you groups developers and you are ready so we edit those entries so another thing that we can do is we can modify or change those entries so the modification is also done using the ldif file format so and uh, let's create another file sudo modify modify content and the item and then let me first i insert more and let me select so at the first i have to put the dn of the entry that i am going to modify this equals to practice this equals to net and then I have to specify the change type so the change type is modify and and then immediately I have to specify uh, what am I going to modify so I'm going to replace an entry replace an entry uh, given name with a new value freddy it was freddy earlier now it is a freddy here right uh, so if i am going to have to modify another entry so another entry replace uh, say the surname then surname of the freddy will be let's say freddy mm, tom that's is that a legal <laughs> is there a name or not so so let me save that wq and then let me modify and i modify at dc equals to admin and this equals to practice this equals to net and then modify f modify modify content and the I have an unwilling to perform. Okay, I missed a W capital W that is specifies to ask the password. Now we have BNAB. Okay. I just modified the entry. So let me do a quick search. Okay, let me search with user ID Freddy and then you can see right now so the given name and the surname is modified right so in this way you can modify you can see a lot of uh, techniques that you can see from the man manual pages in the lf utils so i'll put the link in the description so and then modify you can use a lab delete and lab password and lab search and other other this this much of the commands and then you can learn more about and that those uh, object classes and then attributes which are possible or not so let me let's say i want to learn about uh, the object class POSIX account right so uh, here here is the POSIX account and then okay so well, this object class POSIX account has uh, these are the cn uid uid number UID number, home directory, these are the mandatory attributes uh, that this object class must have and these are the additional attributes that it can or it may not have. So in this way you can search object classes and then the attributes in the wiki and that wiki.com. So I guess we install Slabd and then we add an entries and then we perform a lab search. So uh, we did, uh, we set up an open lab server in the Ubuntu system. So that's it from my side, guys. So see you later in other videos, in other Linux videos. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening and have a good day. Bye-bye.